Hello, welcome to lesson three of how to make iPhone apps with no programming experience. In this lesson, I'm going to give you a walkthrough of the Xcode 8 application. And this is going to be very useful for you because we're going to be spending a lot of time in Xcode building our applications. Now again, I'm using Xcode 8 beta, but by the time this video comes out or shortly after, Xcode 8 will officially be available in the Mac App Store. In the previous lesson, we had used a playground to dabble in some Swift code. Well, this time we're going to create a brand new Xcode project, this one right here. If you don't have this welcome screen, you can always go up to File, New, and Project, like that. And it's going to ask you what type of project you want to create. You can see here that you can create a game, master detail application, page-based application, and so on. But we're going to start with a single view application. And this is going to be your basic application with just a single screen. That doesn't mean that you can't create any of these other types of apps. But if you were to create an app that was more suited for this type of structure, it just gets you started in the right place. But even if you start with a single view application, you can still get to these places. And for the purposes of this walkthrough, uh, I'll be using a single view application. Make sure that you're under iOS though, because there's other types of applications you can build with Xcode. So under iOS, single view application. And here, it's just a single view. This may be a uh, Xcode 8 bug, but it should say single view application. So for my product name, I'm just gonna call it, it doesn't matter what we call it actually at this point, I'm gonna call it Xcode Tour. And you may not have a team under this dropdown, don't worry about that. Organization name, uh, you can just put your name, uh, unless you have a company, you can put that. And the identifier usually is com dot followed by your organization name, and it's going to automatically append your uh, product name to it to create a unique identifier for this application. Now this part is very important. Make sure under language you choose Swift. We do not want to work with Objective-C, at least not in this video, so we're working with Swift. Device you can leave as iPhone here, and all of these I've left unchecked. So uncheck them if they are checked. Click Next. And we're going to, I'm going to save it on the desktop, but you can save it wherever you see fit. Uh, and under Source Control here, I have this unchecked. Okay, we can go through that in the future. But for now, let's create our project. So right now we have a brand new basic app project. And with this, I'm going to show you the main areas of Xcode. Now, right off the bat, you're going to notice that Xcode is separated into four major regions. First of all, you have this tab bar at the top. And kind of similarly to the playground that we used in the last lesson, uh, there's a little status indicator here telling you what the project or what Xcode is doing currently. Right now, it's at the ready. It's not processing or loading anything. You've got this play button icon similarly to what you saw in the playground and when you press this it's going to run your project in the Xcode simulator we're going to see in a quick second and then here you can actually choose different types of simulators we're going to do that in a quick second but before we do that let me show you the other three major regions on the leftmost side you have your file navigator and here you can browse through the different files of your project you can see here uh, we've got a couple of them uh, take note that this actually, these are tabs. They just look like icons, but you can actually click these and they're different tabs. By far, we'll be using this file navigator tab the most. Now, the middle region is your largest region because that's where you're going to be doing most of your editing, whether that's code or the user interface or project settings. And this is called the code editor area. And this area changes depending on which file you have selected. So right here, we have Xcode, our root node selected, and right here we see our project properties. So we can modify some attributes of our project. But if you select a code file, so let's say I select viewcontroller.swift, you can see that this code editor region changes to, uh, as you would expect, a, a place for you to edit code. Now if I select main.storyboard, this middle region changes to what is called interface builder and it's going to allow us to visually design our uh, our app and our view 
Moving on, we've got assets.xc assets. And here you don't see much right now, but this is actually the asset library for your app. And here you're gonna add all of the graphics for your app, and you're gonna be able to uh, give them metadata, such as uh, modify the names and the sizes and stuff like that so that you can use them in your project. So quickly going through the last two files, launch screen.storyboard is another interface builder file that lets you modify the launch screen for your app. And info.plist is another sort of uh, configuration file for your app. And this is another view where you can uh, add new key value pairs or simply attributes to configure your app or you can modify the existing ones. Don't worry about this too much right now. I know it might look confusing. We won't spend very much time in this file at all. So I want to go back to the uh, the storyboard or interface builder because I want to show you on this right hand pane what this is all about. So you know how I said this middle region changes depending on what you select from the file navigator? Well this rightmost pane changes as well depending on what you select in this middle region. This pane is actually separated into two panes. Uh, the top half, actually it's not half, it's about 75% because it comes from here all the way down to this part. It's called the Attributes Inspector. And it also has a couple of tabs as you can see here. So what happens is when you're building your uh, layout visually, let's say I've got a button that I want to modify. Well, if I highlight and select the button in this visual interface builder, this attributes inspector is going to show me the attributes for that button and I'm going to be able to modify the properties for that button to configure things like size, color, text, stuff like that. And down here on the bottom right half of the screen, I've also got a couple of tabs. This is called the library pane. And most of the time we're going to be working with uh, the, these library objects here on this tab. Take note that there are two types of views that you can have for your library pane. You can click this button to go to this sort of view, but I find that this list view is a lot more helpful because it has the name of the element. So if you're not used to what the icons represent yet, uh, you should stick with this list view. So let's do a quick demonstration. Down here, there's a filter box. I can type in button. I'm gonna click and drag this button from the library pane onto my interface builder storyboard view. So I am going to do that. You see the button there in my view? If I tap on that button, you can see here on the upper right hand side that it shows me the attributes for that button and I can change stuff like the text for it. I can call it my button. And I can change things like the type of font it uses, the font size, the color, and so on. So one thing that you might run into if you have a small screen size, let's say you're working on your laptop and you don't need all of these panes at once, you can use these buttons up here to hide and show different panes. So you can see that I can click this button, hides and shows uh, the utilities pane, that's the name for this whole thing. I can press this one and it'll hide the file navigator pane and there's an, a fourth area that we haven't seen yet, and that's this button here that brings up this bottom pane. It's kind of like the in our playground in the last lesson where we saw the output. Well, when we're building our app, if there are any problems when running our app, chances are there's going to be some error messages that show up here. And similarly, we can write code to output or print, as you saw in the previous lesson, uh, to print out different variables or print out different statuses that uh, would give us an indication of how the project is running. This is helpful when there's a bug in our app or a problem and we're trying to track down exactly where it's happening. So this is called the debug area here. And in the future, you're going to learn how to use this to solve crashes and errors in your own project. Now, there are a couple more things with Interface Builder that I can show you guys, but I'm going to save that for a future lesson when we actually start working with Interface Builder. Right now, I want to show you guys the iPhone simulator. So let me go ahead and go up to here. It's selected iPhone SE by default. That is fine. I'm going to click this Run button, and it's going to build our project. It's going to compile all the code and it's going to launch this simulator, this iPhone simulator, and our app as it is now is going to show up inside here.
Now, by far, the question I get most is, how do I change the size of the simulator? Because sometimes, although on this screen you see that this is a fair size, but if you're working on a laptop screen, sometimes the simulator can be uh, pretty huge and take up the entire screen. You can go up here under the simulator menu to Window and go under Scale, and then you can choose one of these options. Or you can see the hot keys for this is Command 5, Command 4, Command 3, which is the current setting, Command 2, and Command 1. So let's try that out on our keyboard. So this is Command 5, you can see that it's really small. And this is Command 1, where you can see it's so large that I need to scroll. So set at Command 3, you can choose one that's comfortable for your screen size. So there's your tour of Xcode. It may look overwhelming, but you know what? As we start building apps together, you're going to get more and more familiarized with Xcode and it's going to become second nature. It's going to become really familiar to you. So if you haven't downloaded Xcode already, I would highly recommend that you do so now if you're serious about app building and try it out. Try out a new project and just jump through the different panes like I did in this lesson. You're going to need Xcode soon anyways if you want to follow along. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Bye for now.